Life is strange, isn't it? But have you ever been buried to the neck by a contractor? Or come home from holiday to find your house has been demolished? Or accidentally commit an armed robbery in broad daylight? Then your life is probably not as strange as Victor Meldrews. One Foot in the Grave doesn't tend to get mentioned when people talk about the best British sitcoms. It tends to be Only Falls on Horses or Faulty Towers. And they're good, don't get me wrong. But I don't feel One Foot in the Grave gets the love it deserves. In fact, I would argue that it's better than the other two. The series follows Victor Meldrew, played by Richard Wilson, a victim of involuntary early retirement, and his long-suffering wife Margaret, played by Annette Crosby, as they adapt to their new life. As the series goes on, we see Victor manage to get into all sorts of weird and bizarre situations. On paper, Victor Meldrew doesn't stand out as a sitcom protagonist. Dell Boy is ambitious, at times greedy, and is always flashy. He has a particular idea of what success is, but takes shortcuts to get there. Basil Fawlty has to have things just so, has a high opinion of himself and his hotel, and is antagonistic to the guests he doesn't like. Victor Meldrew, on the other hand, moans a lot, and I mean, a lot. Hello! Yes, I'd like to speak to the manager, please, and be quick about it. <laughs> Meldrew! No, he doesn't, but he will shortly. So much so that if you were to call someone a Victor Meldrew, you'll be calling them grumpy, easily agitated. And of course, they moan a lot. And you know what? I've got to come to the defence of my boy here, that if someone planted a small tree in my downstairs toilet or knocked a street lamp into my bedroom window, I'd be pretty ticked off too. But this demeanour is only on the surface. If you were his neighbour and you really spoke to him and most of your interactions with him being him doing or saying weird stuff, you think he was a total nutcase. And I kind of understand why Patrick felt the way he did about him. For a series following basically a, a grumpy old man moaning at things, it could have been a lot shallower. I've seen series where the uh, the, the old moaning protagonist is uh, portrayed to be the only sane person in the world, but in an insane world, and um, a lot of their moanings are reflective of the writer's discontent with the world. And if I'm honest, it, it's less funny, and at times it can come across as a bit bitter. But this series doesn't have Victor as the one sane man. Now listen, mate. It's not you. You are the only sane one left, so don't you start cracking up, for God's sake. The world might be mad, but he's just as mad. He's a mad man in a mad world. Yes, yeah, some things he moans about, I'd argue, are justified, but he does his fair share of escalating. Like when he's stuck in traffic, it takes him no time at all to get into an argument with the neighbouring cars. But after watching it for a while, I start to realise that deep down, he is someone who cared. Most of the things that he moans about are jobs, litterers, salesmen, politicians. Just going down the list of stereotypically annoying things. The sorts of things that would be understandable. Boy, you do, me sir? if I'm gonna vote for you, I'd sooner stick my head in a pan of boiling chip fat. He wouldn't wish ill on a group of kids, but would rather not be around them. I won't come back for you, you know. I'll leave you to stay here forever. You bloody won't. <laughs> Poor man just wants to be left alone in peace. But he does have a sense of right and wrong. In the episode Starbound, Victor and Margaret come home to find a homeless man has been living in their shed. Now, what does Victor do? Does he A, verbally confront him, B, call the police, C, get into a fight with him, or D, ask him politely to leave? The correct answer is E. He offers him some food and allows him to spend the night in the shed. And this goes against what we might expect and it even shocks Margaret. He says he has been for three days since they toughed him out of his cardboard box under the railway bridge. What am I supposed to do? And it's these moments of empathy and direct action on his part that elevates him to to be more than just someone who's like a, an old man who yells at cloud we expect one thing and we see the other which makes this character more interesting to watch in the episode the dawn of man victor sees a man toss a load of litter and a dead swan into a river which then he decides to follow him and put maggots in his food on the episode hearts of darkness where he saw those old people being locked into a cupboard under the stairs of the care home he absolutely couldn't let that slide oh sorry i very nearly forgot nearly forgot what i very nearly forgot to call you an evil loathsome bastard he then sets the care workers feet in concrete and leaves them in the middle of a field there's a poignant scene in the episode the worst horror of all where victor takes a job as a doorman while there, he serves a couple who are the type of people you really wouldn't want to be in the same postcode as. They're both being proper Karens to him. He looks over the way and sees a double amputee trying to get into his car. We aren't told what he's thinking, but we do get an idea. A poor man over there struggling to get into the car. And here he is helping those who can quite easily get in and out of their limo. Are not treating him like something that would scrape off their shoe. So he responds in the only way he can. The series itself is quite well written. Not just in the way of like the jokes and making the... Uh, 
the funny moments that land, but uh, the weather yo-yos between the funny moments and the sad moments. As mentioned before in the episode Hearts of Darkness, before the nurses locked the old man up in the stairs, there was a scene where he fell to the ground and they kicked him repeatedly. The episode itself received many complaints after its first broadcast, so subsequent rebroadcasts air it with those scenes cut. It's an uncomfortable watch, but it earns its place in this episode. It's a twist on how we saw them earlier, and it sets up Victor's revenge later on in the episode. But again, on paper, this is a comedy, like, I, I come here to laugh. And yet I'm seeing elder abuse. Like that, that's not funny. Or in the episode, Who Will Buy? Where Margaret visits a blind man called Albert. He lives alone and asks her to read him a letter from his grandson who lives in Australia. Only it's not from him, but instead it's just a bill. Margaret, bless her, makes up a letter as if she was reading it out for him. And you know what, that's actually quite sad. Loneliness in the elderly is an issue, even 30 years on. According to Age UK, around a million older people live alone. Unfortunately, it's not that uncommon. Then in a scene later on in the episode, it's revealed that he was murdered and his house was burgled. Again, that's not funny. Like, ne neither of those scenes where Albert appeared in were funny. And yeah, it, it's actually quite sad. It really, really threw me off. It's like, on paper, this is comedy. And I'd say that it failed in that. But I would argue the opposite. For comedy to work and uh, for the audience to laugh, you need to give them breathing room. Horror films can't all be doom and gloom. You need those times in between the scares. I think the same could be said for comedies, like you need a respite in between the laughs. In fact, many comedies do this, uh, mostly by using drama in order to build story and uh, characterization. But One Throw in the Grave uses these sad and dark moments, not to say that other comedies don't, but this series does it far more frequently, and dare I say, far easier than most others do. It eases from funny to sad and back to funny again expertly, a lot of that has to do with David Remerick's writing. And I think it works because the funny moments and the sad moments are both themselves quite realistic. Far-fetched? Yeah? Impossible? Not really. Okay, yeah, there were times they may have jumped the shark. Like in Starbound, where Victor mistakes cocaine for herbicide. Or in the Executioner's Song, where Victor goes to the toilet in a Chinese restaurant. And is to go down a secret elevator to an underground brothel. But most of the time, the situational comedy is rather simple. Finding a member of the monster raving loony party in your toilet. Plausible. Crashing an expensive car you were hired to drive. Simple. Crashing all three of them. Well, that can only happen to Victor Muldrow. David Renwick said that uh, when writing an episode, he would first think of the most like, weird and uh, bizarre situation that Victor Muldrow could find himself in, and then work his way back, and that would be his structure for the episode. And just going back to the dark moments, I feel they work well because they are applied using the same rules as comedy, that it's usually quite grounded and realistic, yet also being strange and bizarre. Which makes me think, One for the Grave is more than just a comedy. Its overall message is, life is strange, but make the most of it. One-way traffic just gradually grinding to a complete halt. Same for everyone, I suppose. And you just have to try and make the best you can of it. One scene in particular that resonated with me. It was towards the end of the episode Endgame. Victor was out alone in a caravan that was supposed to be haunted. While there, he had a dream about Margaret. Upon returning home, he discovers that Margaret suffered a heart attack and was considered dead for a brief time. The exact time he had that dream. She's unconscious while he sits by her side. Then the machine flatlines. With that, we see a montage of previous episodes of their moments together. Happy moments, funny moments, tender moments. Early in the episode, they got into arguments with each other, leading to Victor going out alone in that caravan. It got to the point where they didn't want to be around each other, but now with her gone, there's nothing more he would rather have. Bloody machines. Turns out she wasn't dying, and that she's alright. As well as being a funny moment, it also says something else a bit deeper, to cherish those around us, and to not take them for granted, to appreciate things before they're gone. And to be honest, I haven't been as affected by a British sitcom as I have been by One Foot in the Grave. Yeah, yeah, there's a 40 year age difference between myself and Victor Muldrew, but that doesn't stop me from relating to him. And it does ask some deep questions uh, that I don't think other sitcoms do, mainly because it's, it doesn't seem like it's in their purview. But at the same time, this series does it really well, and it is actually quite bold sometimes. 
in, uh, in what it betrays. Sort of thing that I feel that on paper it shouldn't work, but it absolutely does. And for that I respect it, and because it's so unique and, you know, has, has affected me in some way, I'll have to say this is the best, not just British sitcom, but any sitcom, I would say this is the best sitcom, in my personal opinion. But yeah, what do you think? Do you think I'm right? Do you think there's some others? If you have your favourites, please let me know down below. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you'd like to see, please subscribe, and we'll see you later.